All right, guys, welcome back. This is Mr. Jensen with EdTech Integration. In today's video, we look at ePortfolios within Canvas. Now, I've used ePortfolios within Canvas for about a year now with my students, and I've found that it's a really, really great place for students to store information or content or um, a portfolio of their work throughout the year. So we're going to look into that today and how we use it with students in the classroom. So to access your ePortfolio, on the left ribbon here, we have this guy account. So once we click on account, we're going to go down to ePortfolios. Now, as you can see, like I said, I've used this a bunch of times this year. I have one for each period. So let's create a new one. On the very right side here, we're going to say create ePortfolio. And let's call this one eighth grade integrated science. Once we name this, name this we can choose to make it either public or not public. Now, for students to be able to turn this in and for me to be able to see it, I need students to make this public. Okay, so I'm going to make this public and I'll make ePortfolio. So there's a couple different things here. Once we get down to the ePortfolio page, this is kind of the introduction page. So what we want to do first, this is a great resource for you guys if you get lost or want to know where something is. You're going to go over here to the Get Started Wizard. What that will do is it'll pop up a screen down here that will show you the different parts of the portfolio. So for example, we'll click on ePortfolio sections and it'll give us a little introduction here about what that is. Now, what's cool about this, if we come over here, we hover over the show me, what it'll do is it'll highlight where this is specifically. Okay, same thing here. And it'll do that for each one of these things. Okay, so when in doubt, if you have, there's any questions or you forget how to do something, you can always come back to this page right here. So I'm going to close this out. Now, we can click on this a couple different ways. If we go to go to actual ePortfolio, it'll show us the ePortfolio that we've created. Okay, obviously there's nothing here yet. Now, if we wanted to go back to where we just were, we click back on this tab up here. Okay, so we can we can toggle between those pages here, home, and then the introduction page here. So let's start on the left side here. On the left side here, what we notice is that there is organized sections and ePortfolio settings. Under this tab here, all we have is our title and then make it public. So if we want students to, to keep it private while they're, while they're working on this, you can have them make it private and then as they share it or want other people to look at it, they can make it public. Okay, so what we're going to see here and what this is really cool is it's kind of broken down like, like a book per se. So if on, this, on the second or on the left side here, we can organize sections. So what we're going to do is we can add a section and then within each section that we have, we can create pages within each section. So let's do the sections first. So I'm going to say, um, let's call this one semester one and let's call this section semester two. So what we could do is we could break this down in quarters, we could break this down in standards. If you were doing this in a language arts class, you could do a, a about me, a, a biography section, a um, in the future section. You can break this up at however you want. So you can think of these like sections or chapters or however you want to think. Once we're done, we're going to click done editing. Now we can toggle between these two sections. And as you notice, obviously there's nothing there. So maybe under the home page, this is where we do a little bit about me or a little bit about the science class or what I hope to learn or goals for this year or whatever it may be. Okay, so there's infinite ways that you can use this with students. Okay, let's click under the semester one here. Now, once we're in a section, we're gonna go to the right side here and we're gonna notice there's some options here. Now, like I said, within each section, you can add pages. So if we go up here to organize and manage page, we can, re re we can rename pages, we can add pages, etc. So the page that we have here is called new page. Okay, so if we go edit this page, let's call this page now, let's say um, in, let's say, let's use it how I use it. So in science class, we have it semester one, semester two, and then we're going to break these down via standard. So 8.1.1 slash 8.1.3. That's what this page is going to be called. So I'm going to have students put the their portfolio of their best work under this page right here. Okay. So we can allow comments. Okay. We can take that on or off and we can make this page public. So now you can see on the right side, I have a page under 
semester one section that's called 8.1.1 slash 8.1.3. Now, usually what happens, it's kind of nice, is I have students set all of their pages up at one time just to, to eliminate friction and confusion. So let's set up a couple more pages here. So let's call this page um, 8.1.2 slash 8.1.4. That's a standard. And let's add one more page. Oops. So we're going to go add one more page. Let's call this 8.1.3.8.1.5. Okay. So under semester one, we have these three pages here. Now, if we were to click on semester two, we're going to notice that there's no pages here yet. Okay. So once we create a page, we can click edit this page. Now, the way ePortfolios is set up, it's set up into different blocks. Okay. So for example, we have a block here right now that is a rich text content. So what we can do here is we can come here and add text. We can add pic embed pictures, links, um, whatever it may be, tables. Now, let's say, for example, if I wanted to add another rich text content um, block, if I click this, underneath here, this is a new block. So a student could have a portfolio. This could be one section of their portfolio in this page. So they could demonstrate one of their learning objectives here or an assignment or a picture or a description or just some kind of deliverable here. They could have the same thing down here. So, so for example, the assignment could be within this, within this standard, demonstrate your learning in three different ways or demonstrate your learning um, via picture, via writing, and then maybe via something else. Okay, so let's go down here again. Let's say, for example, we wanted to use an HTML embedded content. This would add a different block here. Okay, course submission. So this is where students can go and they can add this course submission here, and they can find they can find um, different assignments within the class. Okay, now let's say that we've created these blocks accidentally. We want to delete some of these. So we can come up here and click delete. Okay, so let's say uh, a student wanted to add some text here. Um, this is where they could add text. And then down here, then maybe they're adding a table, something like this, and then below that they're linking or something like that. Okay, so we could save that page or underneath there, let's say we wanted to add a picture or a file upload. Okay, so we can do this a couple different ways. We can choose from file. Okay, so I'm just going to do, let's just pick one of these. So this is a file on my computer, or they can choose from they can choose from files or um, pictures that are already in within the um, Canvas course. Okay, so a couple of different ways you can do that. So once we're done with that, we can click Save Page. Now th this right here it didn't work very well, but we'd have to add some text and stuff within here to make this table kind of expand a little bit more. Okay, then they can go on to this next one, and so on and so forth. Okay. So again, the value here is, is that this could be a platform where students keep all of their best work or all, all of their understandings for each standard, or maybe it's a journaling spot throughout the year. Um, if it was a standard spot or deliverable for standards, um, students could go back before the year end test and look back on the things that they've learned and um, kind of use it as a study guide. Um, or it could be, a, again, like a working document as you go throughout the year. So thanks for watching this, guys. If you enjoyed this, please think about hitting the subscribe button and the like button. It really helps me out. And I really appreciate it. Thanks.